Romanian and Portuguese fighter jets are participating in a NATO exercise conducted at Lithuanian airspace. Footage show the F-16 fighter jets taking part in NATO's Baltic air policing mission and the goal is to demonstrate capabilities of the F-16 aircraft and also test their coordination. The training comes on the back of the announcement by U.S. President Joe Biden at the G7 summit in Hiroshima last week that the U.S. would be joining the F-16 coalition. Iran's defense ministry tested the fourth generation Qoram Shar ballistic missile. The missile is named Khaybar as a range of and has a range of 2,000 kilometers. It is also capable of carrying warheads weighing over one ton. Tehran says the program is purely defensive and is for deterrence. Fifteen months into the Russia-Ukraine war, the Russian opposition held a meeting in Paris. Politicians, journalists, human rights activists and above all opponents of Russian President Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine exchanged views. The aim of the meeting was to organize themselves and define the political future of Russia once the war is over. South Korea has launched its homegrown rocket Yuri from the Naro Space Center. This comes a day after it was forced to postpone the launch due to a technical glitch hours before liftoff. This will be the third launch of the Nuri, which successfully pushed test satellites into orbit just last year. Tugboats in the Suez Canal have refloated a large ship that was briefly stranded with flows through one of the world's busiest waterways returning to normal. Canal authorities said that they were informed of an engine malfunction and deployed tugboats to successfully refloat the ship. Approximately 12% of the world's trade moves through the Suez Canal and the shortest shipping route between Europe and Asia. Russia's Wagner Mercenary Group has started withdrawing its forces from the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut and they are transferring their positions from there to regular Russian troops. The announcement was made by the chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. Prigozhin announced the capture of Bakhmut on May 20th after the longest and bloodiest battle of the war. A team by the Myanmar government has arrived in Bangladesh. This is a part of a mooted pilot scheme to repatriate around 1,200 of an estimated 1 million Rohingya refugees. Bangladesh and Myanmar have been looking to return 1,100 people to the violence wracked state of Rakhine in the coming weeks, despite Rohingyas expressing major misgivings. A labor union leader who led a long-running strike against Cambodia's biggest casino gets a two-year jail sentence for committing felony with eight other fellow union members who received a lesser term. Jim Sitar, president of the Labor Rights, has been leading a strike that began in December of 2021 in protest of mass layoffs. She was convicted after leading a January 2022 demonstration of nearly 400 other dismissed employees who were demanding to be rehired. In a shooting and stabbing incident in rural Japan, a woman was killed and two others were unconscious. A man dressed in camouflage stabbed a woman with a knife and then shot what appeared to be a hunting rifle. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with Sri Lanka's president as the South Asian nation looks to bolster efforts of restructuring its debt and repair. An 
economy deeply scarred by a severe financial crisis. Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time in its history in April last year as its economy was crushed by its worst financial crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. Sri Lanka owes about $7.1 billion to its creditors with $3 billion owed to China, $1.6 billion to India and $2.4 billion to the Paris Club, a group of creditor nations. To commemorate the 25th anniversary of the European Central Bank, the heads of European political and financial institutions as well as Prime Ministers and other dignitaries gathered together and celebrated the ECB's impact on the continents. EU's President Charles Michel said that the establishment is a milestone in the history of the European Union and also said that the praise of the creation of Euro, the European single currency, is unmatched. Hundreds of Texans gathered in Raldi for a candlelight vigil to mark the anniversary of a school shooting that took the lives of 19 children and two teachers. A year ago, local police waited nearly an hour despite children calling 911 for help before a U.S. Border Patrol tactical team stormed in and killed the shooter. A Texas legislator's probe of the shooting blamed systemic failures and poor leadership for contributing to the death toll. Dozens of anti-DeSantis protesters gathered in front of Four Seasons Hotels in Miami's Brickell District to protest against the newly announced presidential candidate Ron DeSantis, who is expected to attend fundraising event earlier in the December. Earlier, DeSantis announced his presidential bid for the 2024 U.S. elections. Members of the transgender community in Buenos Aires holds a march to demand the approval of a bill that would provide financial reparations for trans individuals who suffered abuses by the state security forces. The activists have presented the bill for the eighth consecutive year and speaking in front of the Congress before hundreds of protesters, transgender activist Salva said that the crimes against the community amount to genocide. Reportedly, the newly born infants are being abandoned outside mosques, hospitals and even olive trees in conflict-torn Syria. The country has been embroiled in a conflict since 2011 and an in-house conflict that has displaced millions of Syrians. As the country continues to quiver under the shadows of the destructive unrest that single-handedly broke it apart. Voters in Turkey will return to vote on Sunday as the country heads for a runoff poll. On May 28th, the country will decide between an increasingly authoritarian incumbent and a challenger who has pledged to restore democracy. Incumbent President Recep Tayyip Erdogan scored about 49.5%, while the leaders of the opposition Kemal Kilij Durulu received about 44.9%. At 69, Erdogan is already Turkey's longest-serving leader, having ruled over the country as Prime Minister since 2003 and as President since 2014. He could remain in power until 2028 if re-elected.
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Kiev was continuing preparations to use and receive F-16 fighter jets to help in the fight against the Russian invasion. Zelensky said that Ukrainian forces had already proven that they could quote-unquote master modern weapons, adding that he was sure that his country's pilots would be just as successful in their training on the aircraft. The US has given the green light to allow Ukrainian pilots to train to fly the F-16s, which has created an inexorable momentum. Now, northeastern villages in Spain's Catalonia were swept by a hailstorm, leaving streets covered in ice. Footage captured by an eyewitness showed a vehicle trapped in a street by trunks of ice. Cars were seen driving along a road which was partially covered in ice. The hailstorm caused flooding around the houses in the area. Firefighters battled a massive blaze in a large multi-storey building in central Sydney as emergency services cordoned off the area. A car parked nearby was also in flames as firefighters tried to put out the fire in a building close to Sydney Central Railway Station. A spokesperson for the New South Wales Police said that there were currently no reports of injuries. In the Grand Bazaar in Iranian capital of Tehran, pencil seller Mohammad Rafi has made a mark with his 35-year-old shop that sells nothing but pencils. Even in an age of digital media, Rafi's shop sells only pencils of every hue and shade imaginable with huge expansions in his collection down the years. Lebanon's Sersok Museum, which was heavily damaged during the deadly 2020 Beirut blast, is finally reopening and preparing to reopen its doors. The museum will reopen after three years of restoration work. The museum's director termed the move a sign of hope and cultural life returning to the crisis-stricken Lebanon. In an amazing use of technology, a Ukrainian school is being built with the use of 3D printing technology. This will be Ukraine's first school which will be used, which will be using this technology and the facility for 100 children is being built with the help of 12 by 15 meters robots which pour concrete layers. The head of the project said that this technology will help in building facilities 10 times faster as compared to the conventional methods. Saturn's iconic icy rings may not be around for future sky gazers to glimpse at through their telescopes. According to a new research, data captured by NASA's Cassini mission, which orbited the gas giant planet between 2004 and 2017, has revealed new insights into the age of the iconic rings. It also provided the probable time in which the rings might be lost. The findings have been shared in three studies published this month, which support the theory of the rings appearing long after Saturn's initial formation. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and the bosses of leading artificial intelligence companies like OpenAI, Google, DeepMind and Anthropic will work together to ensure that the society benefits from the transformational technology. The British Prime Minister and the tech leaders met on Wednesday and discussed the risks AI poses from disinformation and national security to existential threats. Britain said that in March it would split responsibility for governing AI between its existing regulators for human rights, health and safety and competition rather than creating a new body dedicated to the technology. Students at Redam House, House School 
in Berkshire, England are using VR headsets to enter the metaverse for a variety of interactive lessons. From getting up close and personal with the woolly mammoth to manipulating the planets of the solar system. The Metaverse School is being developed by Inspired Education Group using their physical school as the virtual reality location for global students. The entrance to iconic singer Tina Turner's home in Switzerland was decorated with flowers, candles and tributes on Thursday, following her death at age 83. Fans left notes with their names and messages outside the gates of her home in Zurich, along with tributes using Turner's well-known song lyrics, You Are Simply The Best. The American-born singer died after a long illness in her Swiss home on Wednesday. Wildcats bred in captivity are going to be released in a national park in Scotland. The species are native to the country but have been driven to the brink of extinction. 20 cats are set to be released this year, starting in the next few weeks.